A question I frequently receive is, what is your favorite antenna for portable operations? This is a great question and it made me curious. When it comes to antennas, there are so many styles and variations and I try to feature as many different types of portable antennas on the channel to give you, the viewer, a better understanding of how these antennas function. So my curiosity got the best of me and I went through all of my logs, um, data sheets, notes, pictures, video content and tabulated each and every antenna setup that I used in the last year. Since August of last year, I did over 150 parks on the air activations in a wide variety of locations and conditions and in looking at all of that data, I came up with five major antenna types. Along with the five major antenna styles, I also discovered another four minor antenna types. And we'll talk about those uh, stragglers and end cases a bit later, because I think they offer some insight on future trends when it comes to portable ham radio operation. But in crutching the numbers, I learned some really interesting things. First off, antenna use is seasonal. That is, in the winter months, I'm gonna pick something that is easy to deploy, so I spend less time out in the cold. Second, and more important, convenience ranks high in my choice of antennas. And convenience factored greatly into my top two choices. So, without any further ado, let's get into this list, starting at number five. My fifth most popular antenna choice is this, the lowly ham stick. From mid-December until about early March, I'm as likely to pick a ham stick for my activations than any other antenna. And it shows with 11 parks on the air activations using ham stick style antennas. When it comes to price versus performance of a commercial antenna, the ham stick is hard to beat. Historically, ham stick was a trade name of the Lakeview Antenna Company. When it went out of business, the name garnered generic status. So any of the brands like HF stick, shark stick, ham tenna, pro stick, were all fall under that same ham stick umbrella. Ham sticks are monoband antennas and at a cost of about $30 each, it isn't cost prohibitive to build a small collection of them. As a vertical antenna, you can slap a mag mount on the roof of your car and be on the air, or use a more substantial mount and go mobile with the whips. They are my personal choice in the winter months precisely because they are so easy to set up. If you're starting out with ham sticks, get the 20 and the 40 meter whips and grow from there. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised on how well they work. Number four on the list is the NFED Halfwave. NFEDs are very popular for their relatively good performance and ease of deployment. I used an NFED halfway 14 times in the last year, and I didn't differentiate between brands and models because really an NFED is an NFED is an NFED, and they all pretty much operate in the same manner. But many of these deployments were part of an antenna review, so I tabulated them in the more generic sense. The history of the NFED half-wave is a little murky, but there are references of NFED antennas in QST magazine going all the way back to 1929. Most of these are random wire style antennas and not a resonant radiator like the NFED half-wave though. In the mid-2000s, improved ferrite core materials allowed for the creation of an efficient high impedance transformer necessary to match the half-wave resonant length of wire. And with that, the NFED half-wave burst into the scene. What I like about the NFED half waves is their relative ease of deployment. They can be put up with just one support, either a tree or a mast, and a 65 foot piece of wire gives good performance on 40, 20, 15, and 10 meters without the use of a tuner. It's no wonder this style of antenna has become the overwhelming choice of new hams and portable operators worldwide. I don't have any personal recommendations on a particular NFED half-wave brand. They pretty much all work the same. My best advice is to pick one that aligns with your operating style. Number three on the list is the sleeper antenna, the Ribikov. With 17 activations based on this style, the Ribikov propelled itself into the forefront due to one big reason, the introduction of the 25-foot telescoping whip from Chameleon Antennas. The Ribikov is a non-resonant vertical antenna that consists of a 25-foot radiator with a 4-to-1 transformer at its base. 
Four 16-foot ground radios fill out the antenna system. This antenna was created by Enrico IV3SBE back around 2009, but languished in relative obscurity just until recently. I started playing with this style of antenna in the winter of 2024 and demonstrated my 25-foot Frank antenna special back in April of that year. What makes the Ribikoff appealing is its propensity of being a DX antenna on the upper bands. The antenna develops a beautiful low takeoff angle on 10 and 15 meters, and some of my best DX has come from this antenna. Performance drops off precipitously as you move down on the bands, but I've found that adding a 28-foot piece of horizontal wire to the 25-foot vertical whip creates a non-resonant inverted L-style antenna that truly works well on 10 through 80 meters. Incidentally, Ribikoff is Russian for fisherman, or son of fisherman, depending on the translation. The early models used a fiberglass 7 meter fishing pole to hoist the radiator in the air. Which brings us to the top two antennas for my parks on the air activations. The numbers were so close, just a couple of additional activations could have easily switched their places in the standing. Number two is the breakout and probably the most talked about antenna of 2025, and that is Greg KJ6ER's performer antenna, the POTA Performer. Greg KJ6ER's performer antenna is a result of when you ask the question, how can I make the most efficient antenna and still maintain ease of setup and portability? After multiple iterations of antenna modeling and real-world testing, he can confidently state that his performer antenna is over 93% efficient. Seeing the value of this antenna, I became an early adopter and promoted his design with a series of how-to videos. In fact, I recorded 52 Parks on the Air activations alone with the performer antenna. Building the antenna isn't difficult, and if you've done portable ham radio operation in the past, you probably have most of the parts. The core of the antenna is the elevated 17-foot telescoping whip, but the secret sauce is in the elevated tuned radials. These radials can be deployed 180 degrees from each other for omnidirectional coverage or in a 90-degree angle to develop an enhanced front-to-back ratio that helps pick out weak signals. I know this sounds like a lot of hype, but his antenna won second place in the HF category for the 2024 ARRL Antenna Design Contest, and construction of it is featured in the September 2025 issue of QSD Magazine. Which leaves us with the number one antenna, the tried and true, the old reliable, one of the simplest portable antennas to deploy, and that's the ground-mounted quarter wave vertical. The ground-mounted quarter-wave vertical antenna has long been my go-to radiator for portable operations like parks on the air. Over the years, I have refined my processes going from long and fewer to shorter and more radial wires to now almost exclusively deploying the Faraday cloth or magic carpet as my ground network. The system works surprisingly well, and even though it doesn't have the efficiency of the performer antenna, it is good enough to get me on the air both at QRP and barefoot power levels. Over 54 of my parks on the air activations in the last year were with the quarter wave ground mounted vertical. So there has to be saying something. What keeps me using this setup is its extreme portability and fast setup. I can be on the air in under four minutes, and with the Faraday cloth as my ground network, my footprint stays small and unobtrusive. This is important if I'm having to set up in a busy location or if I'm worried about trip hazards around the antenna. In making this list, honestly, I was a little bit surprised. I felt that in using the performer antenna so much in the last year that it would have been the runaway winner. But the performer and the ground mounted vertical were in a dead heat right to the end. Ultimately, I believe the convenience won out. In the cold weather months, the ground, ver the ground mounted vertical is very easy to deploy and it still offers very good performance in a variety of conditions. I definitely shy away from wire antennas in the winter months, mostly due to the time it takes to get them into the air, and other factors like snow banks and frozen ground make their deployment just a little bit trickier. But we really should talk about the outliers. Uh, th these are the antennas I used a few times over the course of the year, but not enough to move the needle and break into the top five. Still, I think they offer insight, and you may see their use increase over the course of the next year. First off is the Delta Loop. I use Delta Loops 
antennas five times in the last year. Both the rigid loop, like from chameleon antennas or res antenna systems, and the wire delta loop that I put on the air for field day. I'm in the process of refining my delta loop deployments, so you might see more of them in the coming months. Next is the dipole. Long back in my early days as a Parks on the Air activator, the dipole was my frequent choice. Uh, we were in the early days of Solar Cycle 25 and the antenna's efficiency really made a big difference when the sunspot numbers were low. Now that we are on the downward slope of the solar cycle, you're going to see more and more dipole use from me. Third is the NFED random wire antenna. It shocked me that I used this non-resonant wire antenna only four times in the last year, which is crazy because it's a favorite. Uh, non-resonant antennas are a favorite of mine. I think its lack of use is twofold, though. First off, the random wire is, was a frequent choice when I was working towards my N1CC 10 band award. That is... Uh, contacts on 10 different amateur radio bands in a park. I'm less focused on that now, and I've been picking resonant antennas over non-resonant. The other is the popularity of the Ribikov style antenna. As a non-resonant vertical, I can easily make the Ribikov work on any band between 10 and 40 meters, and if I add the 28 feet of horizontal wire to it, it greatly improves its low band performance. Since the vertical takes up less space and is easier to deploy, it's been my go-to over the wire and non-resonant antennas for the last year. So what's your favorite portable operating antenna? Are you a creature of habit like me, or do you deploy a wider variety of antennas? I'd love to know what your choices are. Leave them in the comments down below. You want to learn more about these antennas? Links and resources, including videos and product information, can be found in the video description below. Be sure to check that out. But that's it for this time. I'm Michael, KB9VBR. You have a great day in 7-3.